with you today. It's so good to have a church we can come into. We hear laughter and joy and love already in the house. So we're going to stand. We're going to sing your joy. Um, we're going to just worship the Lord today, but we're also going to be reminded that there is nothing that this life can throw at us that we need to worry about because the Lord's in control. Amen. And so we just need to know that his joy is where we need to live because guess what the Bible says? The joy of the Lord is our what? Our strength. Yes. So if you're not feeling strong today, I just want to encourage you to rejoice in the Lord and think about all of those wonderful blessings that he's given to us. And let's just be encouraged this morning. Amen.
Pastor, how are y'all doing today? You can be seated for just a second. I'm Pastor Tom. I want to welcome you to the house of the Lord today. I'm excited about what God is going to do in this service. I'm excited about what He's doing in our lives. We're looking today to move forward. And if you're a guest of ours today, we want to welcome you with us. If you've been a guest of ours in the last 30 days or so, your meal is on us today. You can have uh, lunch with us in the back. More details following. But also today, if you're a guest and you're here with us, we want to connect with you. You can see a card in front of you in the uh, chair back there that says new here. You can fill that card out, place it at these boxes at the doorways at any time you want to during our service. Or you can place it and take it back here to our welcome center, which is right out these doors to my left or right. And we'll give you a little folder there that's got a coupon for some coffee or a sandwich or maybe an ice cream cone just to thank you for coming. You'll get a text from us later in the week thanking you for coming, and that'll be it unless you need no more information. But that folder has a lot more information about our church, the vision that God gave us when we began here, what we're continuing to do now. And I want us to begin today with a little note of praise, if that's okay. I'm looking forward to worshiping God, but sometimes we just need a good testimony to help us get started. So we're going to share a testimony with you, and then we're also going to pray, pray for a lot of things today in our country that are struggling. There's a lot of heaviness in our country. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of bickering. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of selfishness and agendas. And so we're just going to pray for God's will to be done. That's what we've been doing for 40 days as a church. But let me just share a little good news with you. We prayed last week for Tony and Geraldine's daughter. Uh, to daughter-in-law to receive her kidneys. She did. She received it on uh, basically Monday afternoon of last week. And if all goes well, she will be going home tomorrow whole and well and functional. Amen? God is so good. It's amazing to see what can happen in a short amount of time. As I said last week, He can do more in one day than you and I could accomplish in an entire lifetime. And He knew today He would be in this church he knew who would be listening today by Facebook Live or going to catch our YouTube app later in the week or our church app. So let's just be mindful of that today. God knows what we need even before we ask it. But God calls us to ask it. But today in this moment, I want us to praise. Let's just lift up our hands. And if you're not comfortable, that's okay. You might get your hands like this or you might get halfway like that or you might get all in and just do this. But to me, when I praise like this, I used to struggle so much being a man and trying to praise like this. This is really just an act of surrender. And I know you come into the house today like me. There's a lot of things on your mind, a lot of heaviness there. And as we just praise the Lord, we just remind ourselves of who He is that puts Him in perspective, that allows everything else to fall under that. We also remind ourselves as we sing of the promises that He gave us and His Word gave us. Amen? So let's thank Him first for what He's done with this miracle and others that we believe he's going to do. Let's thank him for all he's done up to this point. Then let's ask him to meet our needs today and then let's stand again and let's worship the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful today for those that have gathered in your house. I'm thankful, God, that I get the opportunity to share your word here in just a minute. But before then, God, I need this time of worshiping you. I need this time to lift my hands and praise you. To say that I don't have it figured out. I don't have it all together, God. Lord, I have my own anxiety and my own worries and my own troubles. But I know I can cast my cares on you today, Lord. And God, we thank you for the miracles that has happened in Geraldine and Tony's daughter-in-law. Lord, we thank you for the miracle of life that you've given her. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is covering this earth. And we pray for peace of mind and peace of heart in every Oval Office and in every peace of mind and our Congress, the Lord, bring unity among us, Lord. Let the Bible happen in our hearts first, and then in our homes, and then in our families, and our workplace, and our schools, God. Lord, we look for you to do mighty things among us today. May you receive our praise as we declare your promises in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, church? Let's continue to praise him. Let's stand and think about his promises today.
those promises right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your promises. And we thank you that you are faithful, always faithful, to fulfill those promises. You sing us with me.
down. There are certain verses that will get you through tough times. There are certain songs that will get you through certain seasons of your life. This song that they're singing this morning, I heard you singing it. This song has been with me for about six months now. It's something that I listen to most every Sunday morning. I listen to it already this morning. It's just something that I can get in my spirit to remember that it doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what's in front of me. It doesn't matter what's going on right now. I can remember what God has done in my life up to this point. And if you haven't served Him for very long this morning, I just want to let you know that He is faithful. He is truth. He doesn't ever leave us nor forsake us. And He will do what He said He would do. And I trust Him not only to do that, but to do greater than He's ever done before in my life and in this church and with our, with our family that He's called us to be in this church. And so I just want us to sing a little bit more of that. Very simple song, of course, like most of our modern worship tunes are. Some people call them seven and eleven, seven words. We're going to sing it eleven times. It's very simple. But you know, we live in a world where we're just bombarded with so much stuff. We come in here with so much stuff on us and so many distractions in our lives and so many distractions for our part. Sometimes we just have to sing something over and over to get it in our spirit. So I just want you to realize this morning as we sing that, He will never fail. His word says that he never will. He's never failed me this morning. So let's just sing a little bit more of that together today in Jesus' name. Let's worship together.
two, three. I give it to you, Jesus. Lord, we give it to you today. Take it from us and show us how to keep it in your hands, under your blood and on your throne, Lord, for you can have authority over it. We place our minds and our hearts and our homes and our finances under your control today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let's give it praise one more time. Amen. 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 We're about to dismiss our children to Children's Church. We are guests today. We have a child with us from the ages of 4 through 12. We're going to let them go back to Children's Church here in just a second. We have nursery from infants all the way up to age 4. You can check those, check them in right here. And then Children's Church checks in right around this hallway to the back corner here. They'll check you in and make sure that everybody's safe. And you can come get them right after church. I'm going to dismiss them in just a second, but I also want to share a couple more things with you. We do receive tithes and offering. God's led us to do it a little differently. There's boxes that I've already mentioned, and they're here. You can place it at any time you want to during the service. I'm going to pray over it today and ask the Lord to bless our tithes and offerings today. It's such a generous church. We're moving forward in so many projects here, but we're also helping other churches. I'm thankful for the flood relief offering that you gave last week the Carolinas. We're going to send that off tomorrow. So if you haven't missed that opportunity last week, you can go ahead and give to that. Today we'll send somewhere around $500. I'm excited about that. We just help other churches and help people in need. I'm so thankful for what God is showing us the needs that we can be. Because this is what the church does. Amen. So we're going to ask him today to multiply what we're bringing in. Yes, in our own lives, that's a guarantee. We know that from the Word of God. We know that it goes further if we give Him our first fruits. That's a guarantee. So if you're wondering about it today, the Lord even says to test Him in that. But also, we need the fruits that are brought in today to multiply because we've got so great vision here, but also things we want to do in our community, people we want to help, ministries we want to sow into. So we're asking Him today to take what's brought in and He can multiply supernaturally. He owns cattle on a thousand hills. Amen? So he can do that, not only in your life, but in our church today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for those that are called to work with our children today. I pray to God that they would be attentive, that you would take their restlessness and just have them settle in that time that they're together. Let them learn about you, Jesus. I pray that no child would leave here without knowing you as Lord and Savior. I pray for every adult that's about to hear the word that you've laid on my heart, God. I pray that they would settle their minds and hearts too, that there'd be no distractions today. It would simply focus in on you and allow your word to speak to our hearts so that we can apply it. Lord, that we leave here today lighter of heart, strengthened in our spirit, God. Lord, and we ask about this offering today again that you multiply it. You can do that, God. You can make things happen when I've seen you do so many things in this church and in my own life. When there wasn't enough there, Lord, you multiplied it, made it so much more than it could be. I know you're able to do that even greater today because you're called us to greater things. Lord, we're going to fellowship here in just a second. So we want our fellowship to be sweet. We want everyone to feel welcome and feel the love that you've given us. So, Father, as we do that, may you be honored in everything we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Our children and our workers can go back to Children's Church. Let's greet each other very briefly and make everyone feel welcome. Let's feel the love of the Lord this morning. We'll get our minds and our hearts focused on the Word. Just after a few announcements.
wonderful. We just thank you guys for coming to church today. The participation in worship is just, um, I was telling Don just the other day, you know, it's, we're not singing to you. We're all a choir together. Amen. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's going to be in heaven. Right? We're all going to sing together. So I just appreciate your participation in worship. And um, the Lord is just pleased when His children worship Him and thank Him. And uh, so thank you for that. And um, tonight we are going to participate in the Rise Youth Rally that's going to be happening at um, Pedal Spiritual Life Center. Dakota and Michael have information on that um, as far as meeting at the church. I think they're meeting here at 445 if you want to carpool over to Pedal. Um, and they'll have a few seats open for those that don't rock, don't have um, a ride. But they need to know that so we have enough vehicles here um, to take as many who wants to go to that um, Rise uh, Youth Rally that's going to be happening this tonight. And it's going to be at 6 p.m. Um, today is the day for our barbecue rib plate lunch, our fundraiser for Damascus Road Recovery Center for Men. And um, if you purchased a ticket, um, you'll just give them your ticket, get your plate. You can either get those to go or we have tables that you can eat those here if you want to have some fellowship time. It's up to you. They do have a few extra plates if you have not purchased um, that's just first come, first serve basis until they run out. Uh, we would love for you to take those so we don't have to eat so many ribs. I mean, that would be a really hard job, right? You know, have to eat barbecue ribs all week. But we would like for everyone to get um, a plate if they possibly can. Um, so they do have a few extra. Uh, we are in the middle of our fundraising campaign for remodeling our kitchen been great for today, but we may do around here. We usually work with what we have, but it's going to be nice to have a kitchen here at Destiny Church. And you can see our little thermometer rose just a little bit, so we're almost halfway there of our $15,000 goal for that. So if you would like to give, just mark your envelope, a kitchen, your giving envelope, or, or check, or you can give online for that um, through our app or website. Um, also, the Hurricane Florence Relief Offering, we're um, extending that one more week, and uh, we'll be sending that off tomorrow. So if you would like to give to uh, Hurricane Relief for the flooding victims in the Carolinas, we're going to be sending that money through our Church of God State office. So that money is going to go to churches and members of churches, um, so it's a little bit more organized as far as where it goes. And um, like I said, we're going to be sending that off tomorrow. So you have one more opportunity to give to that cause. And, um, you know, in, in troubled times, we're called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And even if you say, well, I don't have that much, God can multiply just a little bit. That's given in faith. And um, that's just who our God is. And he can do the impossible. And so we just love you guys so much and are so thankful for our wonderful church family. Ready to hear the word of the Lord today? And two, we are going to look at something today that I think all of us, if we're honest, deal with, and that is worry. But we'll get there in just a second. I just want to just take a minute and kind of talk to you as a as a family, whether you're a guest for the first time today or you've been with me a while. I just want to kind of walk you through where I'm going. We, we're not in the middle of a sermon series right now. That's very unusual for us not to be. We'll start one, I feel like, in November. It's coming. But I do feel like I want to kind of walk you through where we are up to this point in this year. And then, like I said, if you're a guest today, I just want to tell you where we are so you can pray about joining us and going forward or where we're headed. And this will tie into the message that I'm that I'm speaking to you today, but just to be just to be transparent with you, the Lord is really working on me. He's really changing uh, and what I focus on in my life and, and who I am and how I represent Him. And so that's going to reflect who our church is because I'm leading it and He's calling other people to lead it. But I want to be whatever God desires for me to be. I said to him when I was called in the ministry that I didn't feel a lot that I was a preacher, and I still don't feel that way today. I, I don't feel that I'm a preacher, but I do feel that he gives me things to say. I told him if he would give me something to say, that I would say it. And so I've got that in my heart again today. But also I want to explain to you that 
that I feel that we need to be more representative of, if that's even the word, if not, I just made it up. But anyway, I want to represent more of the actions of Christ and not just the name of Christ. Does that make sense to everybody? I want us to be hands and feet in our region, in our community. I want us to be doing missional things outside these walls. And God's going to give us pathways and doorways to get there. But to get there, we've got to work on us. And that's what he's been doing since the first of the year. He gave us the word beyond. And I, I, I was very honest with you last week that I don't feel, you know, that I've gotten that far beyond where I was the first of the year. I feel like we've been in a process of him really kind of taking things out, putting things in, in our church, going through a pruning season and, and in my own life. But I feel very, very confident and I feel very excited about the last three months of the year. That starts tomorrow. I talked to you last week about there's 100 days left in this year as of last Sunday. Well, guess what? 92 started tomorrow. So... This, there's a lot that I believe God's going to do the last of the year, but I want to talk the next few weeks and just kind of talk to you about, I feel that sometimes I get something in my mind and I get something in my heart and I've been working on it and God's been working on me about it for almost a year and then I, then I get up here in an hour and I preach it to you and I look at you like, why don't you have it yet? You know, where are you at? But I realize God's just starting with you where he's already led me to. And so I want to be very empathetic to that and very sympathetic to that. And then also he's been asking me to think about kind of, I believe that no one under the sound of my voice doesn't want to make a difference in this world. I don't think anybody here just wants to live for themselves or anybody even listening in or people we would drag off the street and bring them in here and make them sit in here, you know? We're not going to do that. Just don't worry. We're not, that's not part of the future plan. But I think that everybody would want to do that. But there's things that get in the way. And that's what we're starting with today. For the next few sermons leading into November, we're going to look at things that get in the way of really kind of accomplishing our purpose. Things that we know would make us feel better about ourselves that would allow our world to be better if we just step into these things. And But there's things that get in the way. There's distractions in front of us. And so we're going to look at some of that today in worry. Because we have been praying for 40 days as a church, and we just finished up a 40-day prayer challenge prior to this 40 days. That will end next Sunday on the 7th, and we're going to get back together Sunday night, October the 7th, and pray. But this month, we've been praying for God's will to be done. I believe that's happening in front of us. But I asked about 30 days ago now, 33 days ago, when we got and finished our 40-day challenge of prayer, that we would come together corporately and meditate. About, a, I think, close to 100 people came, and we just spent some time, part of that time in silence, just asking the Lord, you know, give us some things to pray about for this 40 days, personally, for our nation, for, the, for our jobs, whatever you want us to pray about, Lord, we'll pray about. Well, very quickly, as I began to be silent and meditate, the very top of my list was the word worry. And I, that kind of took me back. That kind of made me chuckle because I don't consider myself a worrier. As a matter of fact, I think if you pull my bride over here, she would tell you that she thinks I don't worry enough. That she is concerned about things that I tell her is going to work itself out. But now for 30 days and praying about this, I'm about, I know you get tired of playing. I'm fixing it. Just a second. I apologize. For 30 days. Oh, I got ADD. I apologize. For 30 days of, hang in there, tell me that. For 30 days of praying, I've realized how much I worry. Man, do I worry. I worry a lot. And some of you know you worry. You worry that you don't have anything to worry about, even if you don't have anything to worry about. But I think that most of us deal with this today. But in the Word of God, He showed me this week, there is a cure. There is an absolute cure, a promise to cure worry. So I want us to get into that today. So would you just stretch your hands this way and pray for me? Heavenly Father, I love you. I thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you for what you're doing in this family. I thank you for what you're going to do for people who are going to see this later, hear this later, God. Lord, I just need to get out of the way today. I need to decrease and have you increase in my life. I need to simply speak 
whatever you want me to take away or add to it, whatever you want to take away or add, Lord. Let us leave here today hanging on to this promise, knowing that you are allowing us to see our lives are being sapped by worry. It's, we can be so much more productive, so much more peaceful, so much more happy if we could just deal with this big worry war that's right here in front of us. So today, God, that's my prayer, that everyone now that would hear it, anyone that would hear it later, that we deal with this today, that we apply and that we leave here dealing with the worry war. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, David. I appreciate you very much. Also, I appreciate those that are laboring back here to get us ready for our meal today. These young men and their wives have really labored hard to put this meal together. They came to me and I said, you guys are going to have to put it together from scratch by yourselves. I want to make sure we do things with excellence. I want to make sure things are organized and they, everything I've asked them to do they have responded. So today, I want you to realize it's their first time to do anything like this. So I want you to give them some grace as you're going back there to eat and, and being able to get your meals. But I want you to support them. 100% of what they're doing is going to a cause that many of them have graduated from Damascus Road. And it's an awesome thing. So that is my endorsement. That is my blessing. And that is my plug. Get you a rib plate before you leave here today. You will be thankful that you didn't have to go and worry about where you're going to eat. We're going to take care of that right now, right? All right, so let's get into worry today. So word, what do you think of when you think of worry ward? We think of somebody, right, who worries all the time. Matter of fact, that's the urban dictionary definition of it. But let me tell you where this word originated today. It originated from a comic strip in 1956 by a cartoon artist called Williams. And Worry Ward was not a person that worried at the time. Dan, if you can pull that picture up. He was actually a young boy who his actions and how he behaved caused everyone else to worry around him. And so they began to call him a Worry Ward because every time he came into people's lives in the comic strip, he worried them to death. And so they called him a Worry Ward not for what he was worrying about, but that he was causing everybody else to worry. And so I want us to kind of look at that today in those terms, that there's things in our lives that we worry about, and they just become this unsightly thing that we really don't want anybody to talk about. And we don't want anybody to know really we have it like an actual wart. We want to kind of hide it. We don't really want to deal with it. It's not something that's life-threatening, but we, we know that it's bothersome, and so... I want us to kind of look at something funny today. Let's pull that picture up. I know that kind of maybe disturbs a couple of you, but that's that's my impression of what a worry ward is. Got a little hair sticking out of it. I'll leave it be now. But it's just kind of unsightly. It's worrying, and it's something that we're dealing with all the time. Well, there's a cure, as I already said, in the Word of God for worry. And we're going to get into that today. I'm going to read this passage of Scripture. We're going to look at three points quickly. And then we're going to look at the actual cure. And I'll post this later in the week for those of you that want it. We're going to have some scriptures that we can memorize about anxiety. It's really something that I believe we're going to practice and apply. And by the first of the year, this is going to be behind a lot of you. So I'm excited about it. So let's get into the Word of God today. We've only got two verses here. Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 6 and 7. This is Paul's letter to the church of Philippi. And uh, if you're not familiar with this... Paul was imprisoned in Philippi. Acts chapter 16 that I reference a lot where he was beaten and he had to uh, go to jail for casting out a spirit out of a girl that told fortunes. He praised the Lord and that those jail cells opened and people came and even the jailer accepted the Lord. So this is the church that he established from that. Most likely the jailer is a part of this church when he's writing this letter to the church. At Philippi. So let's look at Philippians 4, 6 and 7. I'm reading New Living Translation today. Don't worry about anything, Paul says. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. This is short enough. Let's read it one more time together. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. 
His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen to the word of God today. So inside these verses, there is a cure for worry, for the worry ward. But first, before we get there, I want to look at respond, receive, and remain today. So it's not a question of if worry is going to come. It's when worry comes. How are we going to respond to that? What is our response when worry comes our way? Most of us respond in some way or another, even if we don't realize it. Some of us, as I just said, like myself, are in complete denial. We don't think we worry, but deep down we're worrying a lot. Those are the people who have to go to the hospital with chest pain, just so you know. But I haven't had to do that, praise God, and I, I believe that God is going to help me keep from having to do that. But how do we respond when worry comes? Well, let's look at some ways here. It has been estimated that 75 to 90 percent of visits to primary care physicians are worry and stress related problems. That blew my mind, didn't that? Something. 75 to 90 percent of the people who will go to the doctor tomorrow saying, I'm not right, something's wrong with me, something is going on, that the cause of that is stress and worry. 48 percent of Americans take mood-altering prescription drugs regularly. And all of us know someone that probably should be taking them even if they're not. But 48 percent, that is alarming, is it not? I mean, that is alarming. 48 percent of the people are saying, I've got to take something to help me work through what I'm dealing with. And as I said, some are in denial. Others respond by wanting others to worry with them. They want misery loves company, right? Warts are not deadly, but they're highly contagious. So worry warts are highly contagious too. And so if we're not careful, that'll happen to us. And you're like, nah, that won't happen to me. Somebody won't make me worry. Well, guess what? Let Jim Cantore show up. Within a hundred miles, the weatherman channel guy said, I'm here to report. You will not find an ounce, even a grain to make bread in any store. No gallon of milk. Cows will work overtime just to make up for the lack. Now, why do we want milk if the power's going out? I can't figure that out. But people just get worried and they go, I gotta have milk. Why do we have milk? We don't need to drink milk. We gotta have milk. The storm's coming. Jim Kenford's here. So that's what happens to us. And I'm making light of some things today that some people are really, really struggling with. Anxiety is a real thing. It's paralyzing a lot of people. And unlike warts, worrying can be deadly. There's a lot of health problems that are traced back to stress and worry. So worrying yourself to death is really a real thing. Others respond by shutting down or sitting idle completely, lying in their beds for days, afraid to get up and get out. Corey Tenbaum said this, Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows. Instead, it empties today of its strength. I think that's powerful, isn't it? Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. And we're studying the Sermon on the Mount on Wednesday nights, and we're, gonna, we're in chapter 5 now. Eventually, we'll get to chapter 6, and Jesus deals with worry with his disciples as well. It's been around since the beginning, and it will be here until Jesus comes and gets us. But... We've heard this now, now from Paul. Don't worry about anything. Man, that's really hard to do, isn't it? Not to worry about anything. But he also gives us something to do in the place of worry. Instead, respond to worry by praying about everything. Be specific. Allow God to hear your prayer. Give those things to him that he needs to have and be specific. Whatever, when worry comes to your mind, our response should be a prayer. We should be able to respond by prayer. Now, we have had in my house, we've done this before, we're going to start doing it again this week. It's not going to be something either one of us are going to look forward to, but you can hold a friend to say, hold me accountable. When I start worrying, just stop and ask me to pray about it. You can ask your spouse to do that with you, but get ready, there's going to be some problems. Because a lot of us just want to worry. A lot of us don't want to pray about it right then. No, no, no. I need to declare the problem. I need to get out the problem. I need to deal with this. I don't want to work. I don't want to pray yet. I've got to feel bad about it first. Right? Maybe that's just me. 
Maybe that's just me. But I'm telling you, when Teresa and I have done this before, and she says, wait a minute, we're not going to worry, let's pray, it aggravates me. Why? Because the devil wants me worried. My flesh wants what it wants. It wants to be heard. It wants to be spoiled. It wants to be tantrum-oriented, as I just did a little funny one right there. It wants to know that it's been wrong, that I shouldn't have to ever worry about this. TV, I go back now. Somebody said that I would never have to worry when I accepted the Lord that everything was going to be blissful when the Word of God is contrary to all of that. The Word of God says that when we step up, it doesn't mean that we won't have trouble. Jesus said we're going to have some trouble. But he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen? He's overcome the world. So when worry comes our way, I've got to be specific. If I'm complaining about it more than I'm praying about it, I'm doing it wrong. So the Bible says that I need to cast my cares upon the Lord. If I care about it, guess what? He wants to hear about it. It's important to realize that, that he's already living inside of me. He's with me every day. He knows what I'm struggling with. He knows what I'm thinking about. He knows what I'm worried. Big or small, just bring it all to Jesus. As I said, if I'm worrying about it more than I'm praying about it, then I'm going about it the wrong way. And as we cast our cares, we're also going to do that with a thankful heart that we give him praise that God calls us to praise him be thankful for all he's done up to this point that helps us get in our minds and our hearts when we respond with praise it's about who God is and who we're not and it's also about thanking him for all he's done for us up to this point but what we've got kind of twisted lately and this has been going since the beginning of time too. And this is me personally. This is how I get myself up when I'm down lately. And I've got to stop this. And I'm asking the Lord to help me with that. Is say, well, you know what? I really don't have any problems. You ever heard the guy that, that was walking down the, the street and his buddy came up to him and said, hey, hey man, you look a little down. You okay today? Dude, if something else happens to me today, it'll take me two weeks to get to worrying about that. That's how much stuff I got going on in my life. You know, sometimes we feel that way, don't we? Sometimes we feel that way, and the way that we typically get going, and I've been talking to you about this now for weeks, if you've been with me, guilt is a short-term motivator. But we in the Western culture, we try to guilt ourselves into doing something else. We're like, well, you know, I really don't have it that bad. I saw on Facebook today, somebody had it worse than I did. And so I really don't have real problems. I shouldn't worry about them. But that's not going to get rid of it, guys. Your problems are real to you, no matter what they are. And while when we compare, we've been talking about this on Wednesday night as well. When the Pharisee was praying and he was thanking God that he fasted once a month and he was praising the Lord, I mean once a week, sorry, and he was thanking God that he wasn't like this poor tax collector here. How do you think the tax collector felt when he said that? He was praying out loud. Now we don't say that to someone else, but we think it. Well, at least God's not being as mean to me as he is being to that person. That's really kind of what's going on in our minds. And that's, that's, a, that's a counter way of thinking that's going to get us in trouble. What we need to do is remember what God has done up to this point in our lives. What he's seen us through already. And if you're just beginning to serve him, and some of you around this place have just been beginning to serve him, or here it means today, have just been beginning to serve him, all you're going to have to do is trust him. But I promise you, he's going to prove himself faithful. And if you begin to thank him about what he's done and respond to worry that way, then your heart gets full of peace. That's what we're about to talk about. And then you're not worried that you're not got it as bad as this person. You actually have enough peace to come over here and help this person. That God has called us to respond in a way that is different than the world. So let's look at receiving that peace today. Let's look at receiving. So once I pray and I petition, but I petition with a thankful heart, pray about everything, worry about nothing, and I thank him for all he's done, then I request that comes into my mind and my heart, then his presence begins to flood my soul. When I'm praising and I'm praying, the presence of the Lord begins to come around my life. And that presence is what heals me. That presence is what fills me with his love first, and then eventually peace. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. That worry is just dressed up fear, really, right? Isn't that right? 
Worry is just dressed up here. And his love brings peace. And I receive that peace. And as I praise, that's a choice I make. I make to give him honor. I give him glory. I praise is a choice. I have to do it. The Bible says that if I don't do it, the rocks will cry out. The earth praised him this morning when the sun rose up. It was a testimony to who he is and who God is. When the waves crash against the shore, that's a testimony. When the birds sing, it's a testimony. I am called and created to give him praise. Not out of obligation, but of appreciation. Not of, oh, well, i got to go to church today and I need to sing. They haven't seen me in a while. They'll be calling me in a little while if I don't go today. But then I go and I appreciate everything in my life. It helps everything get put in perspective. A thankful heart is a peaceful heart. So the scripture promises me that once I do that, that I'm going to receive peace. Now notice this. This is important. To get your peace. There's no promise here that once I give my request to God that He's going to grant my request. There's no promise here that my situation is going to change. I just need to pray about what I'm worrying about, but there's no guarantee that God's going to take that situation out of my life, that He's going to fix anything. But there is a guarantee that I can get peace about it. Prayer either changes what? Our situation or us. Either way, change comes. And so it's important to realize that because if not, if we're requesting to God and we just want Him to do what we want Him to do and He's not doing what we want Him to do, we're never going to have peace. But if we give our request and we know that we've been hurt by God, and that's true because if He records every tear that His children ever cry and they're bottled up in heaven, hallelujah, if He knows the numbers of hairs on my head and He's got them individually numbered, what matters to me matters to him and he's going to hear my prayer I just got to have peace that it's going to work out that he's with me and I've just got to leave there knowing that I'm guaranteed peace and I don't leave until I get it I pray and I praise until I get that peace but I have the utmost confidence that I'm going to receive that peace and that peace is going to flood my soul I'm going to be like I don't understand. I don't understand how I can be this peaceful in this situation. I don't even understand how this works. That's the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen? That's what one of the translations says. Then the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. So once I'm able to pray through, and if you don't know that yet, try that. Try praying through. Try praying. Try praising instead of worrying. Because worrying is not going to get us anywhere but unhealthy. That wart's still going to be there when we finish. It's undeniable, supernatural, uncontainable, unquantifiable, unstoppable peace. That's the peace that you and I have. To have. We can't manufacture that in our own hearts and mind. Okay? And once I get it, it's going to guard me. It's going to guard my heart. It's going to guard my mind. Now that word guard, if you look it up in the Greek, or the translation that we're reading and, and how that original translation was, what Paul was talking about as a guard meant a regiment of soldiers that would go and guard a city to protect it. So what does a guard do? A guard protects us from attack. What's it called when we have a freak out beyond all freak outs? A panic what? Attack. Right. Why do we have panic attacks? Because the peace of the Lord is not guarding our hearts and our minds. And guess what? We think now, the world thinks, and I think in my own flesh, that my mind can control my heart. That my mind can tell my heart what to think, what to feel, how to act. That it can be able to handle that. But that's not right. That's not what the Word of God says here. That I pray, I get the peace of mind, I get my peace of heart, and then that heart controls my mind. The love of God, the peace of God, floods my mind and guards me from the panic attack. Because the, a panic attack affects what? We think it's a heart attack, right? Our chest starts pounding, it gets tight, but it started up here. Whether we know it or not, that's where it started to get to here. But God feels it here first, and that's what controls this. It's the difference in that relationship is how that works. What did the Word of God say? Well, guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's it. I've got to live in Christ. I've got to stay with Christ. I've got to have relationship with Christ. I've got to pray and ask Christ to guard my heart and my mind. I may have to stay there hourly. I may have to pray hourly when I'm going through a tough time. Maybe even... 
twice an hour. Once a day is absolutely that way, right? If I'm going to take an aspirin for my heart, why not pray to the Lord for my heart? Amen? Why not get a hold of Him? Why not have a personal relationship? There's so much more to that. I'm living a life that is sapped of strength and energy. I'm living a life that's counterproductive because I'm not in Christ Jesus. I'm not having a relationship with Christ. And therefore, he can't guard my heart because I'm leaving the city over and over. And that's the next thing is that I must remain. I've got to remain there. I've got to remain in that so that I can remain in Christ. The enemy's going to try to trick me to get out of that, to move out of that and leave. But he's going to try, try to attack those things that affect me where I have to feel like I can't do it without just acting on it. I can't just pray about it. I gotta act on it. I gotta, I gotta get it out. And I'm not saying we don't have good accountability partners that help us get it out, but I'm saying that we have to realize and know that prayer is our first defense. We've learned that peace is received through petition and thanksgiving, but it's kept in Christ Jesus. That relationship with Him, I have to remain there. Also, to lead me and guide me and keep me in perfect peace. That's what's important, right? That we live a life of peace. If need be daily and hourly. Without Christ, I'm going to try and use my mind. I've said that to you. It's the heart that controls the mind in a healthy Christian. We have to remain there and not the other way around. I can't entertain worry in my mind. When I entertain worry, it's like it's like I've got I've got this guard around me. I've got this place, the peace, presence of God, His love is guarding my heart and mind. And worry comes and knocks at the door. And if I'm not careful, I just let them in. I just let them on in. What did Paul say? i got to take captive every thought. How do you do that? You ask the Holy Spirit to help you see it. Holy Spirit, help me when I'm doing it. Get your accountability partner like I'm talking about. So that when you're worrying, that you go ahead and turn that to prayer so your energy is not sap for the day. Jesus says in Matthew 6 that we're going to study on Wednesday nights that who can add an inch to their stature or an hour to their life by worrying? No one can. It's actually going to do just the opposite. It's going to make us hump over. It's going to make us short-lived in this earth because we're worrying about too many things. What did he tell Martha? Martha, Martha, you're worried about many things when she was complaining about Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and learning from him and getting there. She was getting ready to prepare. He wasn't telling her not to worry about what she was doing. I mean, not to do what she was doing, but saying, come here first, Martha. Come here first and then we'll get everything else taken care of. When we do that at the beginning of the day, God allows his peace to guard our hearts and our minds. So in closing today, as the praise team comes, let's look at this cure together here. So here's the cure for worry warrant. You ready? Reject, request, rejoice, replace, and repeat. So what am I going to do when worry comes? All right, the first thing I have to do is reject it. I'm not made to worry. I'm not created to worry. That's something I have adapted. That's, some, that's a habit that I have taken on my own. I reject it. When I realize that my mind is worried, when I realize my chest is about to get tight, when I realize that I'm getting more gray hair, whatever that might be, I reject it. And Jesus, I reject it in Jesus' name. I reject it. I reject it. I, I, I was thinking about this this week, that I may just have to, because I'm really struggling. I didn't think I worried a lot, but I'm really struggling. But I may just have to just say talk to the hand. When it starts coming out, I'm like, mm -hmm. and the next thing I'm going to do is request. No, but yes, Lord. This is coming into my mind. This is bothering me. This is on my mind. It's on my heart. Because if I'm not careful, I become friends with my worry. I become comfortable with it and I don't want it to let it go because I, I felt like my entire purpose in life was to worry. I promise you, God can handle it. I promise you, you can cast it on Him and He won't have to do anything differently than He's already done. It's already handled on the cross. Amen. Jesus already took care of anything that you and I could ever go through. So I'm going to reject and then I'm going to request. I'm going to request that God will hear my prayer. I'm going to be specific. I'm going to tell him. And if I don't know what I'm worried about, I'm going to say, I don't even know what I'm worried about, but I'm worried. I need you to get it away from me. I need your peace to come in so I can rejoice. 
And so I began to rejoice. I began to praise him. I began to lift him up. Allow his Holy Spirit to heal me and move forward in my life. I began to praise him regardless of my circumstances. What did we just see? Doesn't matter what I see. Doesn't matter what I hear. Doesn't matter what I feel. I'm just going to praise you, God. I believe you and who you are. The victory comes from the noise. And then I'm going to replace. I'm going to replace all that worry. I'm not going to leave my heart void. I'm not going to leave it empty. I'm going to replace all that I have with the presence of God. I'm going to replace it with that peace. And it's going to guard my heart. It's going to guard my soul. It's going to come into my life today. And the most important thing I want to get across to you before we finish today is that we got to repeat this. How many times have I in my own life, living for the Lord now some 15 years, where I have a daily relationship with Him, how many times have I come to an altar, I've poured out my heart, and I get the peace that surpasses all understanding. But by lunch, or definitely by the next morning, I'm just bound up by what I was already bound up with. I've got to repeat this. I'm going to pray for anybody today that needs prayer. I'm going to, I'm going to pray for you that God will deliver you and give you peace. But if you don't do this, you're not going to keep it. You've got to repeat it. You've got to dig your own well, guys. You've got to get in here. You've got to reject it. You've got to pray about it. Reject it. Request it, rejoice, get, get some K love going. Reba can't fix it. George Strait can't fix it. Tupac Show can't fix it. All right? I ain't gonna go modern, I'll just quit, right? Rejoice. Replace. Replace those things that you want in your life that need to be replaced. And let's go and do what God's called us to do. And if it needs to be done every hour for the next few weeks, that's okay. Get these words in your heart. Get this on your mind today. Let's get free from the worry. So as they sing today, I want the words of this song to get in your mind and get in your heart today. Let's apply this cure and let's let it stick. Amen? Amen. You can stand or remain seated. I'm going to be here to pray for anyone who wants to pray. If you just want to come and pray, these altars are open. You can pray on your own, on the side. So let's ask the Lord to take our worries from us today. Let's cast our cares upon us.
Promises to me.
quickly right here in this moment. Bow your heads with me right where you are. There be anyone in the house that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is your moment. This is your time. You just need to step into his love and his grace and his forgiveness. He's ready to receive you right now. He's ready to receive you just as you are. You cast your cares upon him today. The Bible says just go ahead and tell him all you've done. Just a faithful to forgive you and you can leave here today with a fresh start. Your mind, your heart. You may have done it before, you just need a restart today. You may want a deeper relationship with it. We're going to leave you where you are. But if that's you, you just simply slip up your hand or message us if you're on Facebook today or later in the week if you want to hear from you, that's you in the house. Father, I just thank you for those who are making decisions for you today to follow you, to step forward with you, to move forward. God, I thank you for your word that we're going to apply it this week and we're going to not worry anymore. So right now, I want you to, if you're comfortable enough, to tell your neighbor, say, for Jesus' help, I'm not going to worry anymore. Let's do that right now. Jesus' help, I'm not going to worry anymore. Jesus' help, I'm not going to worry anymore. Man, we're going to have a lot of time on our hands. We're, we're not worried we can be productive for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. All right, if you're part of our meal today, we want you to go out these double doors and just go down this hallway that we can serve you right there. If you've been a visitor with us in the last 30 days, first time visitor, we want you to be our guest. Teresa and I are buying your meal today. There'll be the table set up after I greet everybody. We'll meet you back there. We'd love you to come have ribs with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his countenance rest upon you. May you go with this place today with the peace of the Lord and guard your hearts and